So if you're watching this, then obviously you have figured it out that barbecue is the greatest food known to man. And you just want to try to figure out how to make barbecue at home. Glad you stopped by. We're going to start today by making some spare ribs. So stick with me and I'll show you how we do it here in Cookie's Kitchen. <laughs> start with today and uh, you know most places that you go uh, most big box stores and everything you can go to them you can actually buy them in the cryo bags now which is really convenient really nice because you don't have to go to a butcher shop to get them although I'm not dissing butcher shops uh, we've got one locally that I use every once in a while absolutely great meat it's it's wonderful um, but I just find that this is much more convenient and I can get it uh, throw them in the freezer when I get home they'll keep for a couple of months uh, if I need to do that so uh, so I really do recommend if, if you're just if you're just going to get something go up to Kroger go up to, to Walmart go Costco's wherever you wherever you shop um, just pick one up in the crowd bag they'll keep forever and it's they're, they're good pieces of meat um, now I do recommend that the first thing you do is actually clean the meat get it started and what I usually do is just start getting it out put it on cold start blowing it up fill the bag itself up with water I'll we'll start rinsing it out at the same time as it's going to make it a lot easier to get that meat to just kind of slide out. So once you get it kind of full, pull that down and it'll just slide out for you. There you go. Start rinsing it out. All right, so what I do next is I just go through and just dry them off. Um, get some of that excess moisture off of the off the ribs themselves. Make it uh, make it much easier to work with. And off the other side as well. idea when you're doing this to have everything ready first so that you're not going back and trying to redo things later. Alright so all I'm doing right here is just uh, using apple juice. It's just 100% apple juice. Um, nothing fancy. It's just whatever the whatever the cheapest brand is that you can pick up there. Um, the whole reason for the apple juice is to add a little bit of a sweetness and to act as a bit of a binder. With that cut in uh, apple cider vinegar. And I use the uh, the apple cider vinegar because you know it kind of blends with the taste of the apple juice. But then the vinegar also helps to uh, to start breaking down the meat, so that all of my rub gets uh, gets pulled into the meat better. Um, it works really well with pork. Uh, so one of the things that you'll want to make sure that you have. When you're doing this is just make sure you've got a seasoning. I make my own rub. Uh, you know, you can use uh, any type of McCormick or um, you know, off brand, doesn't matter, whatever rub you like. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this because your St. Louis cut of ribs is actually just going to be the ribs themselves. And if you'll feel, you know, if you've, you've just kind of bent it back a little bit, you can actually feel the top, the knuckle right there of that rib. You can actually just feel right along the edge where those ribs are. And what we're going to do is we're just going to cut straight down those ribs. There's only about 12 or 13 ribs uh, in there and so you're going to want to actually find them because then once you get down here to the end what you're getting into is, is more just cartilage. So here we are right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up to this 12th bone and I'm going to go right up the edge. Right there. And you'll just cut straight through just like so. And I find that about the third bone out is usually the tallest so I usually try to start there. So one, two, here's the third. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to line it back to the first three. I'm just going to go right in between them. Right there. Gives me my first three. And then from there, I'm just going to go straight across. So you just follow your ribs. 
Always a good idea to have a, a good sharp knife, as I said. And if you'll do it, you'll notice you have an awful lot of meat. That will be left over right there once again. This is great meat. But this right here is what would be referred to as a St. Louis style rack of ribs. But anything you see like this, anything that's just excess, that's just kind of hanging off there, we don't need that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of clean that off, get rid of a little bit of that, just like so. And off. Now on every rack of ribs right across here, uh, on this back side, so on your concave side, you'll notice you've got your, your meat side, the side where all the meat is. Um, and then on the back, back here, looks like just a layer of fat. Um, and actually what you have right here is what's referred to as the silver skin. Um, and the problem with this is that it doesn't break down. It's like a plastic sheet. And if you don't get this off, you will not get any penetration from your rub. You won't get any penetration from your smoke. Nothing will get through to the back side of these ribs. And so you want to make sure that you get this stuff off. Now, um, lots, of, uh, lots of ideas out there on how to do this. The best thing I've ever found for getting this stuff off is just a dry paper towel. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. But all you do is you just want to get underneath it. You just want to grab uh, a layer of it and just kind of start pulling. And if you can ever get your hand underneath it, once you do it, you just start kind of rolling it right there. And then with that dry paper towel, you just make sure you keep the paper towel up next to that silver skin right there. And that whole thing, if you're lucky, you'll be able to pull the whole thing off. If it's not cut like that one right there, well, and I still got a pretty good bit of it. You can get most of it in one pull. So, you know, all the, all the tricky tools and all the, all the neat stuff in the world, you know, they're, they're different people. It works different ways for them. But I have found that for me, the best thing in the world for getting that silver skin off is just a dry paper towel. Once we've got the ribs uh, cleaned up, once we've got them butchered down pretty good, uh, next thing I'm going to do is start getting our rub on there. Just put it right there in the middle of your foil and then go through and spritz. Sides. And I usually try to start or finish the spritzing with the uh, rib side up. All right, so then what I do is I just go through with my rub and put it on very liberally. I, I, I like the rub on there. Um, these are going to be sitting overnight, and so one of the things we want to make sure of is that we have it have it well seasoned. Because the deal is, over overnight as these things sit sit, what's going to happen is the salt that's in that rub is going to start opening up the pores and it's going to start um, pulling that seasoning into the meat itself. It's going to absorb into the meat so that I get a good uh, deep um, rub. I'm, I'm going to get a good deep seasoning all the way through uh, my ribs. And I want to do this on both sides. Once again, this side has the majority of the meat on it. So I want to make sure that I have it thoroughly covered. Uh, next thing we do, we just kind of pull these up. Them down. I'm not trying to do anything fancy, just, just cover them up and pulling our ends up. And we have a rack of ribs ready to go.